Hey, what's up guys? Mark here from Promix Academy. Uh, today we're going to be looking at some basic EQing in Logic Pro 10. Now, Logic does come with a stack of really great EQ plugins, but since this is a beginner's tutorial, we're going to be looking at the channel, uh, the channel EQ uh, primarily because that is the one we'll be using 99% of the time. So let's jump into our session where I have a snare uh, top selected. Um, to find the EQ, make sure that you are selected on the, uh, you've selected the track that you want to EQ. Go up to the inspector and down the left hand side there's a couple of ways we can do it. We can go to audio effects where our plugins are stored. Uh, jump down to EQ and channel EQ. There are the other EQs I was talking about but again we're looking at the channel EQ today. The other and more easy way to do it is just this EQ thumbnail window right there. Just jump on that and we have our EQ. So uh, yeah, this could look a bit confusing to uh, anyone who's never used an EQ before, but uh, we're gonna go through each of the functions, each of the buttons, and explain exactly what they're for, and then we're gonna hear it in action on that snare. So uh, from left to right, we have the um, frequency bands. We've got uh, all the way down to, uh, to from 20 Hertz, um, to 20,000 Hertz. We have several bands of EQ that we can apply in between there um, and they all serve slightly different functions. So starting with the uh, first one, let's turn that on. This is what we call a high pass filter, which means that anything below that frequency is going to be filtered out. There's going to be nothing there. We can adjust this a couple of ways. We can uh, grab the dot and move it anywhere we want. The other way we can do that, uh, by the way, you can go up as well as down, uh, left and right. The other way we can do that is with the corresponding numbers just below. The first number is the frequency that we select. We can either just drag that up and down or we can type in a specific number just by double clicking on it. The second number is how aggressive you want that EQ to be applied. And the third is what we call a Q, which I'm going to come back to in just a moment. Uh, the next uh, band that we have is what we call a low shelf. And we've got two of these. We've got one at the bottom and we've got one for the top. And what this does is it applies a shelf to everything below that frequency that we selected. So in this case, it's at 79 hertz. We can, again, we can play anything. Let's go with uh, 100 just to, oh, not 20, I mean 100, just for demonstration. And we can do the same thing at the top if we like. And you can see that it applies a shelf to everything above that frequency. Now obviously that's completely impractical. We don't want to do anything like that in the CQ. So let's just reset that back down to zero. The next one is what we call a parametric EQ. Now this is really good for boosting individual frequencies or attenuating them. Uh, we can get very broad by dragging these out or very narrow by dragging them back in. And you can do the same thing with the Q that I mentioned earlier. So generally speaking, with EQing, you want to make sure that you're not doing anything drastic. If you do need to do anything drastic in your EQ, it's usually a sign that something's gone wrong in the recording process, and maybe it would be quicker and better for you to go and re-record whatever it is uh, you're EQing. Um, but generally speaking, if we're boosting frequencies, we're boosting wide. And if we're cutting frequencies out, we want to be a little bit more surgical and narrow about that. So uh, we've got four of those parametric EQs. Then we've got our high shelf. And lastly, we've got our low pass filter, which is exactly the same as our high pass filter. But on the other end, we're going to be filtering out anything beyond that threshold at the top end. Um, there's a couple of more functions at the bottom here, which uh, for a beginner tutorial might just confuse you. Uh, so we're going to leave that for the moment, maybe touch on them in a future video. But for the moment, I do want to have a look at the snare drum. Let's just reset those back to where they were. Okay, so let's have a listen to the snare drum, see what it's all about. 
Um, Okay, so straight away, it's a good sounding snare. There's a couple of things I want to do to it uh, just to um, enhance it. There's not a lot of uh, adverse frequencies that I want to get rid of, but there are a couple of things I can do to uh, just make it sound a little bit brighter, a little bit more punchy. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do, though, is just apply a high pass filter. There's nothing really in this low end that I want in a snare drum, so I'm just going to filter that out. And uh, let's see what it sounds like. Yeah, one thing I should mention about this EQ is it is pretty CPU heavy. Um, I've turned the analyzer off. The analyzer tells us where the frequencies are, are happening, which can be helpful if you've got a powerful system. This little Mac does not, so I'm going to turn that off and hope for the best. Okay, the next thing I want to do is um, add a little bit more body to the snare. That tends to be around sort of 150 uh, hertz. Let's just try that and see what happens. Yep, that's sounding okay. Um, I've just boosted a little bit and narrowed the Q. Uh, again, there's a couple of ways I can do that with the Q numbers down here, uh, but I'm liking what I'm hearing there. There is a boxy frequency that I, uh, I always find in snare drums. It's usually at around about 250. So for uh, a cut, what I want to do is have a very narrow cue. I'm going to sweep around uh, that sort of frequency and see where those pokey, nasty, boxy frequencies are. And when you find it, all you do is just drop it down. I'm going to widen it out just a little bit. Yeah, and already that sounds much, much cleaner. Um, usually uh, I find a boxy frequency in multiples of whatever that number is. Um, so in, at 225, you'll be looking at 450. I might have a look around there as well, but I don't think it's too much of an issue in this case. The other thing I like to do is uh, usually around about 710, 720, there's a really nice frequency on snare drums, which I just like to boost uh, a, a fraction of an amount, it, it, nothing serious, but it just brings out a really nice attack on the instrument uh, nine times out of ten. So let's have a listen. Yeah, that's great. Okay, and then finally, um, I like bright sounding snares. They just stick out in the mix. So I'm gonna use uh, this high shelf. I'm gonna drag it back to about, uh, yeah, about there looks good. Let's see how it sounds and we'll start boosting it up. Beautiful, okay. Now, one thing we should always do when EQing is A and B your post and pre-EQ. So what I'm going to do is turn it off, have a listen, and then turn it on. And what I'm listening for is to see if, or to hear rather, if our EQ has actually made it better. Oftentimes we can be tweaking an EQ for ages and not realize that actually we've made it worse. So I think that sounds pretty good. The last thing I need to do is just see what it sounds like in context. So here it is. Lovely, I'm really happy with that. I think um, I, I like the sound of the snare. I think we've covered quite a lot on the EQ front. If you found it useful, please do give us a thumbs up. If you want to take it a bit more seriously, check out some freebies in the description. Let us know if you have any questions. And if you want to take it even more seriously, check out the Promix Academy details to follow.